Hey, changemakers. Welcome back to the Engage for Good podcast. I'm your host, Allie Murphy. Today's episode is a special crossover episode. Before I welcome today's guests, I want to introduce you to my co-host. Fun fact. Did you know that Engage for Good has a sister organization focused on peer-to-peer fundraising? The Peer-to-Peer Professional Forum is a community for nonprofit fundraising professionals who lead the country's largest runs, walks, rides, and other peer-to-peer fundraising efforts. Just like Engage for Good, they host a conference, ongoing training, and a podcast. Which brings me back to my co-host for today. Marcy Maxwell is the Managing Director of the Peer-to-Peer Professional Forum and host of their podcast, The P2P Soapbox. Hey, Allie. Hey, Marcy. I'm super excited for today's episode and the many crossover episodes that are sure to follow. Same. So we often talk about how the worlds of peer-to-peer fundraising and corporate social impact collide. So it seems pretty natural for us to come together to chat with today's guest in particular. Absolutely. I feel like you and I talk about this close connection But many nonprofits, P2P fundraising and corporate social impact partnerships typically live on totally separate teams with different goals and a lot of the times competing priorities. Right. Totally different silos. And, you know, when that happens, what gets missed are these opportunities for alignment. And not only can a peer-to-peer event serve as a great entry point for a new corporate sponsor or partner It can also be a really strong way to deepen relationships with existing corporate partners through employee engagement. And along that same vein, adding a cause marketing or other social impact campaign can take a peer-to-peer program sponsor's impact to a whole new level. Because at their core, peer-to-peer and corporate campaigns are really similar. They empower champions to ask for donations, volunteer, build awareness, all on behalf of the nonprofit organization. And when you leverage the two initiatives, that's when that true win-win-win partnership is created for all teams involved. Speaking of win-win-wins, I'm excited to welcome today's guest. Robin Raffel is the Director of Corporate Partnerships at St. Baldrick's Foundation, and Amanda Palm is the Director of Communications and Partnerships at Sport Clips. Now, I want to tell you about St. Baldrick's. So St. Baldrick's Foundation is the largest charity funder of childhood cancer research grants powered solely by volunteers and donors. And their signature peer-to-peer head shaving, yes, I said head shaving (laughs) events, have been a mainstay on the P2P US Top 30, raising more than $17 million last year. Okay, and on the corporate side, Sport Clips is a sports-themed hair care franchise for men and boys, if you didn't get it from the name, and they have almost 1,900 stores across the U.S. and Canada. In 2016, the brand signed on as St. Baldrick's Foundation's first national sponsor, and since then has contributed $2.7 million to life-saving and life-changing childhood cancer research. It's really amazing. So once you get the chance to meet Robin and Amanda, you are going to understand why this partnership has been so successful. They are here to share their secrets to building a strong working relationship and what it takes to create and sustain a mutually beneficial partnership. And with that, let's get started. Robin and Amanda, welcome, welcome to our very first crossover peer-to-peer soapbox and Engage for Good podcast episode. We're so excited to have you join us. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. We get two for one today. I know, I know. I love it. So let's just jump right in. I want to hear a little bit about um, both of your personal and professional journeys that that led you to where you are with your current roles. Robin, you at St. Baldrick's Foundation and Amanda, you at Sports Clips. Yeah, so my journey personally um, is a very personal journey for me and where I am today. Um, uh, my five-year-old son, my oldest son at the time was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of cancer. And this was 30 years ago. It's hard to believe that it was that long ago. Um, and as, as you can imagine, it, it changed my life forever. He went through, um, a very short treatment, but very aggressive. And, um, he passed away from, um, complications of, of cancer. So, 
it set me on a path and a journey, as you might imagine, as a mom, to learn as much as I can, I could about childhood cancer. So um, I started calling people in Washington, D.C., started a family foundation, actually met the founders of St. Baldrick, who were being uh, rewarded with uh, doing something great for kids' cancer. I didn't know anything about what they were doing and had a conversation. And by the end of that conversation, one of the founders had talked me in to coming back to my home town, shave my head and raise money uh, for research. Oh my so gosh. I, I did shave my head. Um, I did raise a bunch of money. And that set me on a journey really to be a, a volunteer event organizer for St. Baldrick, uh, hosting several events up in the Northern California area, raising money for research. Um, and then a little fast forward, um, took my family foundation to kind of where I thought I could grow it for 16 years. And was asked to come on board to St. Baldrick's to uh, work in corporate relations, and I love it. I get to work with the most amazing partners, and um, obviously one is here today, and I'm super excited to to talk about our partnership. So thanks for inviting me. I love hearing people's journeys, and yours is an incredibly powerful one that's going to weave throughout this whole episode. Amanda, turn it over to you for a minute. Tell us a little bit about your journey and how you landed at Sport Clips. Yeah, thanks. So super excited to be here with you all today. And I, um, I've i been in franchising since 2007. So uh, it's been the bulk of my career. Um, and I've always been uh, in communications and PR. And often the philanthropic uh, pieces of what a company may want to do fall under that communications PR umbrella. So I've been really fortunate to have that as part of my career for the last 16 years. I was at Schlotsky's for a long time, which is a pretty pretty recognizable sandwich chain where we worked with uh, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation and then joined Sport Clips a little over seven years ago in a communications role and inherited four amazing partnerships with St. Baldrick's being one of those. And so um, I'm really fortunate to work for a brand that believes in giving back and gives me the opportunity to give back on such a broad scale through working at Sport Clips. That's so great. Now, Robin, you kind of you kind of dropped the bomb about shaving your head. So if we have <laughs> people alert. who are listening and are thinking, what did she just say? What exactly did she do? So that is the, the signature peer to peer fundraising event for St. Baldrick's. Can you tell us a little bit about it? How did this start? What does it look like? How do people sign up and participate in an event like that? Yeah, so. I always call uh, shaving my head one of the just most meaningful things I've ever done in my life. It's, it's, it was a journey in and of itself. But yes, yeah, so St. Baldrick, um, how it all started is very glamorous. Um, it was three reinsurance um, Irish executives in New York who were doing very well, and they were really challenged in the industry to, do, to give back. So they were playing golf one day, drinking beer. And each of them challenged each other that if they could raise $17,000 on March 17th, right, St. Patrick's Day, that they would shave their heads. Well, uh -huh. as, as folklore goes, they not only did that, they commandeered uh, their company St. Patrick's Day party, and they raised that, they raised over $100,000. Wow. And wrapped wow. it, you know, back in the day, right? Not really credit cards, but all this cash, you know, on top of the table in a tablecloth, right? Getting taken to that's the a bank. Lot. So that, <laughs> that, that's a lot. That's a lot of cash, right? So so really, that's how it started. And they decided that they wanted to, um, you know, raise money for children's cancer research. Um, and, and none of the three of them had a child with cancer. So this was really a big step. That is how St. Baldrick's head shaving events were born, and they're volunteer driven. So we have VEOs across the U.S. who decide that they're going to host events, and those events are community events. They could be corporate events, school events, which are an amazing way to show young people leadership and, and giving back. Um, so really, they can be hosted anywhere, and the the really amazing thing about our events is that no two events are alike because volunteers are bringing what they have in their resources in their community or their business together. 
And it's really awesome because there's many different levels. They're, they can put committees together. You have our, you know, barbers, like our amazing partners at Fort Clip can show up. Um, we have honored families, a network of over five to 6,000 families that really they come to these events and tell their story. And so a lot of times I call it like if, if we could bottle a St. Baldrick's event and actually <laughs> like sell it, we'd, we'd cure kids cancer. It, it's true because there's such magic that happens mm-hmm. and, and it's meaningful for, for several people that take the stage you know, some of their lives have been touched by cancer. It may not be a child, but it's a parent. And so it becomes really like a meaningful event journey in symbolism. And they're shaving their heads in solidarity with kids with cancer. So that's our that's our signature event in a nutshell. Um, we it, Our events are virtually coached. So they're set up for success with a personal virtual coach and lots of different resources. I want to dive into this more on the Engage for Good podcast. We talk a lot about right fit partners. Why do you partner with partnering authentically using a variety of resources? This sounds like a pretty natural fit. We're talking about head shave events and we're talking about haircuts. Amanda, talk to us about how this partnership came to be and what makes it a right fit for you beyond perhaps the obvious. Yeah, I mean, as you stated, St. Baldrick's hosts head shave events, and we have a network of 15,000 stylists around the country who cut hair. So absolutely a no-brainer from that perspective. Um, But it goes a little bit deeper than that for us. Uh, You know, our founder, Gordon Logan, uh, you know, established Sport Clips with with three very clear values. um, Do your best, do what's right, and treat others the way they want to be treated. And those are things that he lives every single day. The company is now led by his son, Edward Logan, who is our president and CEO. He is a, absolutely a big believer in that. And it, it filters down. And that's really what it comes down to is, you know, we know this is the right thing to do. We know that we are out there treating others the way they would like to be treated with giving back to the community. And it is a natural partnership. And so it really grew out of the fact that we already had a lot of stylists who were familiar with St. Baldrick's Foundation because St. Baldrick's was established. They were, as Robin mentioned, those volunteer event organizers who were already setting up events were going directly to Sport Clip stores asking for our help. Um, So Uh it kind of grew out of this relationship that was already there at the local level. We just expanded it to a national partnership. And so in 2016, and it was really, um, the partnership was launched, I think, two weeks before I started with the company. Um, we announced this. We were the first national partner to join on with St. Baldrick's. We made a million-dollar commitment at that time, a million-dollar donation commitment over three years. We launched it at what we call our National Huddle, which is our annual Sport Clips convention, where we had 3,000 stylists in San Antonio. And we hosted a 130-person head shave event as part of our huddle, where our founder, Gordon Logan, had his head shaved. Um, our, Our current president and CEO, Edward Logan, had his head shaved. Our president at the time had his head shaved. Um, we had tons of Sport Clips folks up on stage. I think at the time, it was the largest um, head shave event for St. Baldrick's at the time, which was amazing. Wow. We raised over $130,000, I think, over well over $100,000 just in that one event. Um, so we kicked things off with a bang because we wanted to show our, our, our system that this was an important partnership for us. But we also wanted them to have a visual representation at this event of what these shave events were like. And as Robin mentioned, They are so powerful. And that's really what makes it unique for our brand is that this is an opportunity. It's more than just lip service. It's more than us just making a financial contribution. It gives our stylists the opportunity to get out of the store and to go participate in these events, to connect with the people who have committed to shaving their heads, to meet these honored families, to meet these kids. And to really be part of of the event beyond just, you know, doing fundraising, which is important to us because it's a culture builder too. It's something that's unique to our brand and it's something that our competitors aren't doing. I love so much of what you shared. And in addition to really kicking things off with a bang, as you said, you also kicked it off with leadership. And when you start something for the first time, having that buy-in from the top, even if it's coming from top down, sometimes it's bottom up, but having leadership buy-in can make all the difference when you're really rolling things out. 
hundred percent makes all the difference. And I will preach that till, you know, long after I'm, I'm gone from sport clips is that leadership <laughs> is key. And, and, and they absolutely do, you know, they, they talk the talk, but they walk the walk. And I think both Gordon and Edward have had their head shaved now at least twice that I know of in my seven years at, with the brand. Well, you know, I think that's, you know, sometimes people don't realize that the peer to peer professional forum and engage for good are so closely connected, but hearing this story, it's where you just know that the world of employee engagement and the world of peer to peer <laughs> fundraising, I mean, it's a, it's not a Venn diagram, it's a circle, right? I mean, it is, there's such overlap between those two types of initiatives. Now, one, so you said the National Partnership started in 2016. Well, of course, flash forward just a few few years later, like all peer-to-peer programs, there was a massive pivot during the pandemic. Uh, So Robin, it sounds like having a great partner like Sport Clips was really key to how y'all were able to sustain your fundraising efforts during the pandemic. So can you talk a little bit about how how this partnership had to evolve, what you learned during the time? Yeah, like everybody else, right? We were we were trying to make it up as we we go along, but I think the unique um feature to our partnership was that constant communication was key. So Amanda and I were having, you know, constant weekly pretty much almost, uh, calls where we were touching base with each other. We were, you know, finding out, I was finding out, and Amanda can speak to this a little bit more, that their stores were closed, right? They're dealing with max amounts of closures with their, you know, over, I believe, 1,800 stores and employees and and all of it. We, on our side, right, no more in-person events. We started uh, probably like everybody else, ours are in community. So we were, we were going like by local regulations. So everything changed internally until it finally was like, okay, we can't do any. So, you know, and our amazing sport, uh, uh, special events team, you know, had to pull it together, learn the whole Zoom life, right? Which we were pivoting very hard into virtual, um, which ended up being actually a a very interesting thing because we're we're we have virtual events all the time and our corporate events really it was an amazing thing because corporate events are started to become family events where kids are you know uh all connected everybody's connected on the screen but you're seeing you know the executive get his head shaved um but amanda and i really kept close so so having those conversations about leadership about you know, what we were going to do together. And just, I think that was really a big strengthening time for us. And I know we're going to probably talk a little bit more about, you know, kind of some, some hard conversations and, and changes. Um, And that, and, but I believe that that set a real basis for our trust, um, which is, you know, kind of our, one of our key takeaways, we're going to talk about a little bit more. Um, so yeah, having having that constant communication, I think is is really key. The other thing to just kind of keep in mind too is is we were while we're, while we were two very different organizations because St. Baldrick hosts head shave events and obviously we provide haircuts in our stores. We were dealing with a lot of the same challenges as far as right. what the limitations were as to. St. Baldrick's not being able to host head shave events, us going literally in the span of two and a half weeks from 1800 stores open to zero stores open. So it was, it was a really scary, challenging time. Um, but we were navigating a lot of the same obstacles, which was helpful. Um, but as Robin said, communication was absolutely key, trying to find alternatives to keep our stylists engaged, especially while they were not working because our stores were closed. Um, and then one thing I'm personally really proud of is the fact that we we kept our financial commitment to St. Baldrick's for that year too. And, you know, it would have been really easy for us to make that cut to say, because we cut a lot of things. Uh, we went from, you know, re- normal revenue to literally zero revenue. Um, and it would have been really easy for us to say, sorry, St. Baldrick's, we just can't make this commitment. But but we followed through on all of our our charitable contributions, which I think says a lot about the leadership of our brand. I agree. And I could, I, I think it also says so much about your partnership that while both of you independently were going through, as everyone was, such a crisis of what are the next three months, six months, a year look like, 
you also were thinking about each other as well. And to me, that is, that's a sign of a really great partnership when times get tough. It's not just we're thinking about ourselves, but we're thinking about the partnerships on both sides. So I love hearing that. I'm going to transition us a little bit. Your partnership began in this head shave space but it's also grown beyond that. Can you talk, Amanda, about how Sport Clips has engaged in other cause marketing and other types of activations with St. Paul Dricks? Yeah, you know, as I as I mentioned before, you know, the core still absolutely lies within the head shave events. And, and that mm-hmm. is, you know, that's St. Paul Dricks bread and butter. It's important for us because that is the primary way that our stylists get involved. But, you know, one thing that we've seen that was really powerful and remarkable is, We've had stylists who have been so inspired by attending these events that they have committed to shaving their heads or have created their own events. So rather than us just showing up at events that are already established, we are creating new ones for St. Baldrick's. Um, but one of the things that we did, we knew that we, you know, we knew that we wanted to figure out a way to do more beyond just sending stylists to events. And so in 2022, we decided to do an in-store fundraiser for the organization. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned, we do have three other charitable organizations that we we sponsor on a national level. So we do have to be mindful of those. Um, we do have another in-store fundraiser that we do every fall, but we knew that we could figure out a way to make this work. And so in 2022, we did a two-week in-store campaign. Um, we ran it for the first two weeks in April. It was a very basic, very simple, um, you know, client driven fundraiser where as clients were checking out after getting a haircut at the kiosk, the opportunity to donate would pop up on the screen. Um, And it really was a great way to give clients a way to support the organization, but also tell clients what we're doing. Sometimes they don't know that we support St. Baldrick's. They may not be aware that we send hundreds of styles to events throughout the course of the year. Um, and so this was a way to keep keep that partnership top of mind because we know more and more that customers and clients want to support brands that give back. We know that they're interested in companies that are charitable. And so this was a great way to kind of remind them, hey, not only is this something that we do, we've been doing it for a while and this is now your opportunity to participate. And we were able to raise um, $166,000 for St. Baldrick's in a, just a matter of two weeks throughout our stores. So we were super excited about it. Um, we're looking to do even bigger and better in 2024. Um, yep. We're looking for maybe a month long campaign to tie it into March, which is when there's a lot of head shaving events. And we think we can double that or more for 2024. One other piece, you've mentioned the stylus a ton, and I want to take a piece of that. One of the things that we do at Engage for Good is we do a giant point of sale research report every two years. So that's what got my gears turning here. One of the things that was in it this year was the labor shortage and how that impacted campaigns and businesses as a whole. I would think, but I'm curious what you're what you say, Amanda, that having this partnership and probably the others that you have as well is a unique selling point when it comes to attracting and probably retaining stylists. It absolutely is. Um, we are certainly not immune from the labor challenges. Uh, Pre-COVID, we probably had close to 16, 17, even up to 18,000 stylists nationwide. So we're down about two to 3,000 stylists across the country. Um, but this is such a priority for our system that even when stores are short staffed, they're bending over backwards to figure out a way to participate in these events, which is amazing. But yeah, you're absolutely right. This is a differentiator for us from a brand perspective. And we think that it's an incentive compared to our competitors where, you know, if if you're a stylist and this is something that's really important to you and you're looking at comparing sport clubs to other brands, we would think that you would pick us because of these opportunities that we give our our stylists to participate in. Well, speaking of attracting, attracting more people, I guess my question, so Allie asks about attracting more stylists. I'm curious, how has this maybe opened new doors, Amanda, for you to have new customers that find out about Sport Clips through St. Baldrick's and vice versa, Robin, if y'all are seeing maybe even a different demographic of, of donors or participants because of your relationship there with sport clips? I mean, I definitely, I mean, it definitely, it's a two-way street, right? It's a win-win. I mean, there's no down, there's no downfall here. Um, Yeah, getting, and also, you know, we have the opportunity to show off our partnership and, and what that 
whole um, company is doing for us. And we look at every opportunity to do so. Um, and so we're going to, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the other takeaways. And, and so I, I don't want to spoil it for, for some other things we're going to talk about. Um, but definitely, it's a definite win-win for sure. Yeah. And from a client perspective, you know, as I said, we, you know, there's research that shows that, you know, especially with younger, younger clientele, um, millennials and younger, that they're, they're very much interested in brands that are, are, are generous, that are philanthropic, that are, you know, aware of the environment that, you know, believe in cause marketing. And so from that perspective, you know, we don't really have specific data, but we do believe that it's, that it is impactful um, and that it it would draw that, that type of clientele because they know that we are a company that gives back. I love that you call it a win-win. I mean, that is, that's always the dream, right? And so- I imagine that there might be some people on both sides of the coin, right? Some people listening from a peer-to-peer perspective, some people listening from a corporate social impact perspective who are thinking, well, that sounds amazing. (laughs) I wish my relationships worked like this, right? So what advice would you have for our listeners who might be thinking, I want to establish or grow or evolve a corporate partnership connected to our signature peer-to-peer fundraising campaign? Research, do your research, right? So from a, speaking from the corporate side, you know, we knew based on leadership that veterans causes and children's causes were were key to our leadership. So that, that, that right there is going to narrow down a lot. But even then there are tons of veterans, you know, uh, causes and a bazillion children's causes. And so the, the synergy between the types of events that St. Baldrick's hosts and the type of services that Sport Clips provides made perfect sense from that perspective. So, but for me, I think, you know, when you're looking from a company perspective, um, if, if, if you're a company that's looking for a charitable partnership, it needs to align with your brand and it needs to align with your values. And it needs to make sense from that perspective because without buy-in from your system, right? With, if we didn't have buy-in at the stylist level, this partnership would never succeed. And so that's really where it's key from a from a business side is making sure that, you know, the the charitable organization that you're looking at um, aligns with the type of services or the type of business that you operate, as well as with your business values. Yeah, I mean, the same the same goes, obviously, for, you know, the nonprofit side. Um, We have to be careful with our brand, right, in seeking out partners that align with our values. Um, And and it, it, this one was just a, like a no brainer. I mean, really, when you take a look at it, um, it's, it's been a, it's been a great alignment for us. So doing your research, I think always is the first step. I know that, you know, as we're in the seat that I sit, I do a lot of different research with corporate partners. And usually, you know, you can find out pretty quickly if, if you have some alignment. So, but it's key. I think the next takeaway I would say is probably one of the most important would be establishing trust. And so, I mean, I've always looked at approaching partnerships um, not as a transactional, it, it's just not my style. I'm a people person. I'm looking at, yes, what makes good business sense. But I think you really have to approach it in, from, a, from a standpoint of how do we maximize this partnership so that everybody wins in it, right? Um, so I think establishing trust, but also in that is being able to have difficult conversations. And I know that this is that's the point where I was talking earlier about um, being able to to really be honest and have open conversations like we did during COVID. Um, that was one example. And the other example was leadership changes. Um, during that time, and Amanda can speak more to this, uh, Sport Clips had some leadership changes, which really I feel was the catalyst for us to dig deeper and think about our partnership in a new way and in a more forecasting, um, I think, with a more forecasting lens on where were we going to take this partnership? So I don't know, Amanda, if you want to kind of jump in and, and talk about like the, the landscape at that time. 
Yeah. I mean, we were lucky that, you know, when, when, by the time COVID rolled around, we were four years into our partnership. And then, um, that was also the same time that we brought on a new CMO, uh, chief marketing officer. And that is when, wow. uh, Edward Logan, our president and CEO took over as well. And, and they were, they operated very differently than Gordon, who is our founder and our former CMO. And so having those conversations about a change in expectations, right? Because what, what previous leadership wanted or needed or expected was now suddenly very different and not in a bad way, just different. And so uh, the way that we had been doing things for four years needed to change um, based on what they now were expecting. And so having those conversations and, and d figuring out how we were going to work together to provide um, the new leadership, what they wanted or what they expected was, you know, those can be difficult conversations. And sometimes they can be challenging and it may take multiple conversations to find, you know, some common ground and get to some alignment there, because obviously we want to work together and make sure that everything that we're doing is mutually beneficial, but we are still two independent, you know, entities as well. So, um, and even, even so far as, you know, can sport clips continue to make the same financial contribution every year and do those do, you know, money is always challenging to talk about, right. But being able to absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, but being able to have those conversations uh, about what those financial, you know, what that financial forecast is going to be or what those future contributions are going to be, that having that base layer of trust makes those conversations a lot easier. I love that you both have throughout this little bit of trust conversation. We get to see you, listeners don't, but you both have had smiles on your faces. And I think that speaks to the relationship that you have and how Hard conversations can be super challenging, but if you establish that foundation of trust and you get to know people as people and you know what different people's styles are and the goals that they need to hit, it is so much easier to work together. What other tips do you want to leave listeners with? Yeah, I think um, listen to your stakeholders, uh, you know, on on both sides of the coin from, from what the company's business object objectives are, but also what your charitable organization needs. Um, you know, we've talked about how important communication is. That open dialogue has been key. Um, and then figuring out, you know, as I, I think it's important not to let partnerships get stagnant. And a lot of times when you you can start a partnership and what's what's working has been working. And sometimes like, well, it's been working. Why change it? Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, that old mantra. But but sometimes, and I'm certainly not a believer in change just for the sake of change. Because if things are working, that's great. But there's always ways to enhance and improve. And so I think listening to your stakeholders talk, and that that means your VEOs on the St. Baldrick side, the stylists on the sport clip side, our, our franchisees who are in the stores who are maybe having to figure out and adjusting schedules because they've suddenly need to, you know, figure out how they're going to send three stylists to an event to make sure that St. Baldrick's has coverage. Um, making sure that you're talking to other stakeholders in the St. Baldrick's organization, leadership on both sides, all of those people um, so that you get a clear understanding of, again, what those expectations are and then how you can continue to improve and evolve the partnership moving forward. I echo all of that. I think, you know, listening, right? That's the key. <laughs> listening, taking in all that information. And I, I think that that's, you know, what we really did when we reimagined and revisioned and planned where we were going to go with our partnership. And it was, it was, I find it exciting because I felt like we were innovating, right? We were moving our partnership forward. And that's where I'd say kind of takes us to, I think our last takeaway, which is don't be afraid to over deliver. Like I put that one down because I take great pride in what we're doing at the foundation. I always inform Amanda. Amanda knows all the different and innovative things that we're doing. Um, and an example would be our streaming program, which is fairly new that we started a few years ago. But I saw opportunity, you know, with some things that we were doing in our streaming program. And so why wouldn't I bring my partner along, right? Why wouldn't I give value add into new audiences? And so really just, you know, I like to look for ways in any kind of projects that we're doing to incorporate um, sport clips. And we're really excited because next year is going to be our 20 little plug here. 
next year is going to be our 25th year um, celebration of head shaving. It's not our 25th anniversary, but it's 25 years of shaving heads. And so we're, you know, in the planning stages and Amanda is a part or sport clips is a part of what those activations are going to look like all year long. So I would urge people, especially, you know, as the nonprofit partner, don't don't just think inside the box or or the partnership that you've created. OK, it's on the deliverables, right? Uh, your agreement. But really look for ways to to bring your partner along with your audiences because it's right, like all, what is it? All ships float to the surface. I, yep. I'm, I'm not saying that one correctly. All but boats rise. Something but all boats other. rise. There you go. There you go, RC. Um, it, it, because that's, to me, where the magic of the partnership lies. And so, um, and I know Amanda does the same thing, you know, with with what's going on at Sport Clips. And I know she's already brought some things to the table that they're planning for next year that are going to be very exciting for us um, as a partner. And I can't wait. So everyone's going to have to stay tuned and watch. I love that. We're doing. <laughs> and, I, and I would, I would add, you know, I think Robin said something that was really key when talking about over deliver is, you know, she said, look for, look for where you can value add. And I think that's important from, from us, from a business perspective, it would have been really easy for St. Baldrick's with their, with their streaming stuff to go find a different partner or to go to a different brand. But rather than do that, they came to us and said, Hey, we'd like to, we'd like to give you this opportunity because you are a national sponsor as a value add to your partnership. And I think that just speaks volumes to the level of respect that we both have for each other um, on an organizational level. And then same from our side, you know, as I mentioned before, we have a national huddle every year and we featured St. Baldrick's at the one in 2022, where we did another big head shave event to kind of relaunch our, our renewal with them for another three years, where we had another group of people, including our founder and our president on stage, getting their head shaved. Um, and, and so I think it's things like that, where you're, you're working together and figuring it, figuring out ways to continue to keep each other involved and to keep both brands top of mind with your individual audiences is really important. I love that because I, I, that has always been something I, I definitely believe is it never hurts to ask, right? There are so many nonprofits, unfortunately, where I hear we don't want to ask our donor or our partner to do one more thing because they're so scared that it's going to jeopardize what they already have, right? And the way I look at it is either they say yes and you've just engaged them in a new way. If they say no, we really like what we're doing. You've just gotten confirmation and affirmation that they like what they're doing. That is important. Though they're not going to say, how dare you ask us to do one more thing? We're never helping you shave heads ever again. And I, so I think that's so important to bringing them along. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit, but you feel thought of, you feel valued as a partner on both sides of the coin. So I, I, I love the way you say, don't be afraid to over deliver and, and offer those new benefits. So Robin, you kind of talked a little bit about the 25th anniversary of head shaving events. So if there are people listening uh, who are thinking, okay, where can I learn more about St. Baldrick's, about head shaving? Where, where can we send them? Absolutely. Uh, people can learn more about St. Baldrick's and our impact. Um, at stbaldricks.org or Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok as St. Baldrick's, all one word. All right. Very trendy on Threads. And so that's the first time I've heard somebody say Threads in a podcast. But Amanda, same question to you. Where can people learn more about your great work at Sports Clips? Yeah. So they just head to sportclips.com. And then similar to St. Baldrick's, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok as Sport Clips Haircut. Also Twitter. Forgot about Twitter. So yeah, X. Twitter or X, 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 X now. Sorry. <laughs> oh my awesome. goodness. Well, you can find all of that in the show notes at both engageforgood.com and the peer to peer side. Marcy, do you want to close out? Yeah. I just want to thank you. Say thank y'all so much. I mean, we were so honored to meet the two of you when you actually joined us at our peer to peer conference in DC back in February. And I love just bringing your, the story of your partnership, of your organizations to, to both sides um, of our peer-to-peer and Engage for Good family. So thank you all so much for joining us. 
and um, Allie. Looking forward to our to more crossover episodes in the future. Woohoo! I'm just wondering, can we just do this again next week and bring our coffee and just have another chat? So, I love it. I thank love you it, guys. Thank you both so much. This is this is really fun, and we just appreciate the opportunity. It was a great, great Friday afternoon. Thanks. We'll see y'all next episode. The Engage for Good podcast is produced in partnership with True Story FM, engineering by Pete Wright. Music this week is by Sabutan and Rex Banner. If your podcast app allows ratings and reviews, we hope you'll consider doing just that for our show. But the best thing that you can do to support Engage for Good is simply to share the show with a friend or colleague. Thank you for listening.